Today we are going to discuss glycolysis. Glycolysis is the part of breaking down glucose inside cells to produce energy. Glucose is a carbohydrate. As we all know, there are three types of carbohydrates. They are monosaccharides, which contain one unit, disaccharides, which contain two units of monosaccharides, polysaccharides, which contain lots of units of monosaccharides. Glucose is a monosaccharide, which contains six carbon atoms. When we eat a glucose-containing food, it digests in the intestine and absorbs to the blood via intestinal epithelium. And through blood, it is transported throughout the body. Next question is, how a glucose molecule enters into a cell? It's by two main transport mechanisms. They are sodium-dependent glucose transport system and sodium-independent glucose transport system. In sodium-dependent glucose transport system, both a sodium ion and a glucose molecule is transported into the cell simultaneously by a secondary active transporter called sodium glucose co-transporter or SGLT. In sodium independent glucose transport system, a glucose is transported inside the cell via facilitated diffusion through glute. Now we are coming to the glycolytic pathway. Glycolytic pathway has three main steps. They are irreversible reactions and they happen in one direction. And there are some other reversible reactions which can go in both directions and they are not so much important. So the first main step of glycolysis, it is glucose phosphorylation, where a phosphate group is added to a glucose molecule. Glucose is converted into glucose 6-phosphate, which we call G6P. This reaction is done by either hexokinase or glucokinase. At the end of this reaction, glucose is attached with one phosphate group and one ATP has been utilized. Next, the second main step. G6P converts into fructose 6-phosphate by a reversible reaction. So fructose 6-phosphate can also convert into G6P. So it is not an important reaction. So the second important reaction is converting fructose 6-phosphate into fructose 1,6-bisphosphate. It is done by phosphofructokinase 1, PSK1 enzyme. At the end of this reaction, fructose 6-phosphate get another phosphate group and another ATP has been utilized. By now, cell has utilized two ATP molecules for glycolysis. At last, the third main step of glycolysis. Before coming to the last step, fructose 1,6-bisphosphate produced earlier undergoes a series of reversible reactions. Fructose 1,6-bisphosphate converts reversibly into both dihydroxyacetone phosphate DHAP and glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate G3P. DHAP also can convert reversibly into G3P. G3P reversibly converts to 1,3-bisphosphoglycerate 1,3-BPG, which converts to 3-phosphoglycerate 3PG, then to 2-phosphoglycerate 2PG, and finally into phosphoenol pyruvate PEP reversibly. All these reactions are reversible. So, these reactions can go in both directions. As the third main step, PP is converting into pyruvate by an irreversible reaction. It is done by pyruvate kinase enzyme. As the products, we get NADH when G3P is converting into 1,3-BPG, 1-ATP when 1,3-BPG is converting into 3-PG, and 1-ATP when PP converts into pyruvate. Fructose 1,6-bisphosphate contains 6 carbon atoms, but both DHAP and G3P contains only 3 carbon atoms. So, 1 fructose 1,6-bisphosphate converts into 2 DHAP or 2 G3P. So, from 1 fructose 1,6-bisphosphate, we get 2 NADH, 2 ATP, another 2 ATP, together 4 ATP, and 2 pyruvate as the results. But for the first and second main step of glycolysis, the cell has utilized 2 ATP. So the net amount of ATP is 2. It comes to the end of glycolysis. That's all for today. Like, comment and subscribe to my YouTube channel. See you all with the next video. Thank you.